I call AAA. Where is your guy? They go, oh, um, I think he gave up. Project cars never, ever go as planned. And I had this idea to do a budget car series, truly a budget car series of buying an Acura Integra. I was like, people can afford them. They're everywhere. Parts are cheap. If they want to do an autocross project. All they really need is wheels, tires, coilovers, and brakes. So I spend about five months looking for a clean Integra. They don't exist. They're all gone. They're all pretty much beat up or modified to a T to where you're never gonna pass emissions in your state, et cetera, et cetera. So finally I find one in LaGrange, Georgia. Get all the way there, talk the guy down like two grand and get the car. He couldn't sell it. So it's, you know, it's an old 2001 Integra. So it's the last year of the Integra in the United States but nothing that special about it. It's just the LS motor in it, the LS non VTEC. So it's not that special, but it'll be great as a chassis and it still goes with the low budget idea. You don't need the GSR or anything else if you don't want to, right? So I get the car, do a few minor mods to it, and then the motor just decides to go. It's basically bone stock and it just let go. Plus it had this terrible security box in it from the early 2000s, so it never wanted to start. So the wiring's all screwed up, the pins are all wrong, the gauges don't work the right way. But we decide to just kind of test it all out and lo and behold, nothing seems to work. So I get in contact with an incredible company called Hybrid Racing. They're great people, they make parts to case swap your car. K-series engines are everywhere. They put them in everything from the Acura RSX to the Honda Element. You know, they have just a million different variants of these things. So I'm like, that's the move. It's a better motor in general, and it's more fun. Plus, I'm sure people want to see a K-Swap. It'll be, it'll be kind of nice. I basically tow the Integra all the way to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Never been there, have no idea what to expect. Hybrid Racing takes care of me. We do the swap, we do a video series, we do the swap in about four days. Everything goes literally perfect, but then it's time to go home. So I drive it home, on the way home, an exhaust bolt basically rattles out. And then it's just this straight piped Integra all the way back. I'm like, don't tell me this is just gonna be a cursed car from the beginning, right? but everything seems fine. Few months go by, car is running awesome. Nothing has gone wrong, period. I go, hey, let me come revisit you guys in Baton Rouge and we can do stuff with the Integra and we can also film a car review wherever you wanna do. Do some promotion for you guys. So I drive it all the way back, nothing goes wrong. So that's about a seven hour drive in a K-swap car. It's reliable. Obviously I'm confident in this thing. We get there, everything goes perfectly smooth. I'm there for three days. It's time to go home. But then my AC decides to go out for some reason. When you engine swap a car, there's little things you just need to button up every now and then. So AC leaked, no big deal. Let's just go recharge it and we'll fix the leak. We find it, we fix it, let's go recharge it. So I'm driving to the Honda dealership, not stressing at all. All of a sudden the car stops moving, period. It felt like a clutch went out or something, no noise at all whatsoever. So you didn't hear a bang or a, anything that showed mechanical failure to your senses. So we're really confused. It just will not go forward. We look under the car, the axle backed off of the half shaft. So we're like, that's weird. Let's just tow it back to the shop, I guess. So we grab a ratchet strap and just tow it right down the street. It was like a block away. We hammer it back on, make sure everything's good. It seems completely fine. It's going to stay on there. At least we think so. Keep that in mind later. So we get the AC recharged. That's fine. All of a sudden, the car won't go into VTEC anymore. We're like, why is this happening? We check the oil. For some reason, the oil was low, even though we had perfect levels when we drove from Atlanta. Made no sense. Maybe it just burned up. Maybe the rings are getting old. Who knows? So I accept that as just, you know what? It's a Honda, they burn oil sometimes. Not gonna worry about it. So we fill it back up, we do another oil change. Let's move on. Let's not stress about it. It's a project car. Get in, <laughs> we get in the Integra and we start our drive all the way back to Atlanta. About halfway through Alabama, it's very windy. You know, it's just open, middle of nowhere. And then 
this huge gust of wind comes out of nowhere and then the entire splash guard of the car rips off and the splash guard and the Integra is connected not only on the bumper, but both fenders. So it kind of routes like this and goes at a 90 degree angle where the inner fender liners would be. It just rips off, bends both of my fenders, just had this car painted and body work done. Fenders are trashed. The bumper is hanging on by a thread. We pull into a rest area. We're like, what are we going to do? You know, we can't fit the bumper in the back seat. We can't try and really rip it off. The metal bracket has been bent to hold on the bumper. Just one thing after another. It's just not going well. So this guy in a tie-dye shirt sitting in a lawn chair at a rest area, as you do, is just hanging out, enjoying his day, and you know, just like, whatever. And he's like, hey, man, you guys need some help? And we're like, yeah. And he goes, I got some zip ties. So goes into his car. He has like four zip ties, but it's just enough to keep the bumper on. And, you know, it's not pretty. It's just on there. It's just going to hold on there. The splash guard's somewhere in the abyss of the woods of Alabama. We, we just forget about it. Naturally, morale in the car, I'm with my buddy Jeff, morale in the car is getting pretty low. We're just like, we just want to get home. Can we just make it home? I'll worry about all this stuff later. I'm over it. But we timed our trip to where we left at the right moment we wouldn't hit Atlanta traffic. The only problem is, since we had an hour or two detour of everything going on, we timed it right on the dot. So 4.30 p.m., Dragon Con is going on, this massive anime convention that goes on in Atlanta, so it's packed. Not only that, people are fleeing from a hurricane in Florida. They're coming up through Atlanta on 85, and there was a football game going on at Mercedes Stadium. So you have these giant three factors. I know Dragon Con has like 80,000 people that attend. It's madness. All of a sudden, I do a lane change. As I turn my wheel, I hear a pop. Axle fell off. Just completely falls off. And it's hanging on like this. So naturally, I do what I believe is the safest thing to do. Go to the closest shoulder possible. Just whoop right on over. Not ideal, but it's under a bridge and it's July or August, and we're not gonna get baked by it. We sit in the car, we're just frustrated. We were so close to home. Why right now? Why didn't it break down later, right? We call AAA like you're supposed to do. We don't panic, we call them. They go, we'll pick you up in 90 minutes. Already pretty a long time, but you know what? It is what it is, lots of traffic. We call the guy, it's his first day on the job. He's like, yeah, man, I'll pick you up, no problem. 90 minutes go by, two hours go by, three hours go by, he's still not there. We keep calling him, he won't pick up his phone. He won't call us back. I call AAA, where is your guy? They go, oh, um, I think he gave up. I'm speechless even thinking about it, but I call him, I go, where are you? He goes, oh, I went home, I gave up on you, I couldn't find you. And I was like, we gave you the mile marker, we gave you the exit, we gave you exactly where we were and you still just gave up? And he goes, ah, oh, it's my first day, so whatever. I'm like, whatever? And this is I-85, probably arguably one of the most dangerous highways in America. Like, people do not pay attention. So we could get hit at any moment. Call AAA again. They go, okay, another 90 minutes. 90 minutes goes by, nobody shows up. They pass us too. They just completely ignored us. So finally, my friend Jeff calls his towing company that he has with like American Express or wherever it is. They show up in like 20 minutes and he makes the conclusion, look, listen, it is too dangerous for you guys to get out of the car and ride with me in the tow truck. So we're basically gonna horse and carriage this thing. You're gonna stay in the car, don't tell anyone, just do it. So we get towed up, not even on a flatbed, just a little kind of tow rig. We're basically popping a wheelie the whole time just sitting in the tow truck all the way back, watching this tow truck just pull us all the way back to our area. We look at each other like, what a day. You know, what a freaking day. We're gonna make it home. And the tow driver was a rock star, right? He backed the car into my garage. He made it all happen for me. And with the right people, you can't stress out. But with the wrong people, you get stressed out. Point of the matter is, got the car fixed, and what the conclusion was is that for a few months in the Acura RSX's production, there was a batch of defective axles. 
and I happened to get one that was like three or four millimeters too short or something like that. So it was just enough to leave me stranded twice. It wasn't Hybrid Racing's fault. It wasn't anybody's fault of their own. It's just bad luck. So at the end of the day, got the axles, fixed the car, and now the car is completely fine. We'd like to thank Dream Car Exchange for supporting the VinWiki YouTube channel this month. DCX is an enthusiast marketplace with auctions for amazing cars happening now. We've got some awesome things planned with them over the next few weeks that I think you'll enjoy. So please stay tuned, but now browse on over to their site and see if your dream car is the next one across the block.